Hello VConf, I'm Brandon. During the day, I work on front-end infrastructure at Palantir. During the night, I like to make volunteer contributions to the PMPM open source project. To begin this talk, let's start with a quick recap of what PMPM is. PMPM downloads your project's dependencies, such as Vite, Svelte, or TypeScript. It distinguishes itself from other package managers like NPM or Yarn by attempting to be space efficient and more performant. You may be wondering what makes PMPM performance, which is the first P in the name. To give a quick summary, it turns out that PMPM adds additional strictness to how dependencies are set up that not only help developers catch common mistakes, but also contributes to faster installation times. I'm going to intentionally gloss over the remaining details from there, since the primary maintainer of PMPM, Zoltan Kochan, explained how PMPM works better than I ever could during last year's VConf. Feel free to check out Zoltan's talk on the VConf YouTube channel. It's titled, What Makes PMPM Performance? Watching that talk isn't required for the rest of this one, though. Speaking of last year, let's check out how PMPM usage has changed. Since the start of 2023, downloads per week has doubled. What's particularly interesting is if we also add V to this NPM trends graph. That's a surprisingly strong correlation. V developer Matthias Capoletto, you may know of his username Patak, was the first to point out this correlation to me. It's fascinating to see the correlated adoption of these two tools together. I don't have any theories on the causation, but in any case, PMPM is proud to be part of the Vite ecosystem that's delivering new capabilities, and it's been cool seeing these two technologies grow up together. We're always trying to improve the performance of PMPM, but also want to think about how to provide a great user experience as well. Today, I want to discuss an upcoming PMPM feature called Catalogs, which attempts to do the latter. If you develop in a large shared code base or monorepo, running PMPM install is already pretty performance. This new feature aims to help you, the developer, be more performance as well. Here's what we'll do in the next few minutes. Let's investigate a common problem that happens in monorepos together. We'll explore what solutions exist today, and then from there, let's look at what catalogs are and how they solve the problem. We're going to walk through a common workflow for developers in a multi-package repo. If you've worked in a large JavaScript codebase before, you may spot what I'm about to do wrong before you see the error. The codebase we'll be working on is a classic to-do list planning application. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, there's a few items that are missing from this list. In between eating and sleeping, I like to migrate large code bases to PMPM and use V to speed up my development time. Cool, with the to-do list fixed, let's get to work. This code base is from a Mozilla developer network tutorial from a few years ago, so it's not using PMPM catalogs or even V yet. Instead, this is based on the maintenance mode view CLI. I'd like to perform a common workflow in monorepos, which would be to refactor code from one package over to another. Let's suppose I want to publish part of the to-do list from its own package for other apps to consume. Maybe we'll want to use this in a landing page app that has a demo of the to-do list that users can play with before they create an account and use the app itself. To that extent, we'll create a new package for the to-do list component. From there, we'll move the to-do item.view file over to the new package. I'm noticing the component imports view, so we'll go ahead and add a new dependency for it since it's good for packages to declare dependencies on the modules they import. We need the original app to import our new component, so we'll go back and add that as an internal workspace dependency to link these two folders together. Back in the app.view file, we'll now import the component from its new location. Cool. With that, let's fire up the local dev server and test it out. Hmm. I don't know if you can tell, but the page actually looks a little bit different, just slightly. The checkboxes are a little bit smaller than they used to be. Let's see if it still works at least. Hmm. I'm clicking on the edit button, but it doesn't seem to be functional. Let's hit the checkbox. Okay, that's a little strange. All we did was move the component without changing it, but somehow the page is now crashing. I don't think it's obvious what's broken, especially since this is a monorepo that has had previous components split out into different packages successfully before. For me, when I accidentally break an app, I like to see if TypeScript is still compiling successfully. Sometimes TypeScript can tell me what part of the code is broken when I don't even know what to look for. Okay, that's a lot of errors, but we can start from the top. I see references to both view 330 and 334 here. There shouldn't be multiple versions of view. What's happening? 
Okay, it turns out when I performed the pmpm add view command earlier for our new package, it brought in the latest version of view. That's clearly not working and interacting well with the version of view that the rest of the to-do app is using. If I look at the pmpm lock.yaml file, I can confirm that theory and see there's multiple versions of view in the lock file now. And I can look at that to-do item components package JSON and see that that's where it's coming from. So we haven't even been onboarded to this project for more than a few minutes, and we already broke the entire repo. How do we fix this? I mentioned earlier that this project doesn't use Vite. Would moving to Vite fix this? Surprisingly, the answer is actually yes. It turns out if you use Vite with React, Vue, or Svelte, the runtime portion of this problem is solved for you. Vite actually has a built-in feature to address this exact problem of what to do when multiple versions of Vue, Svelte, React, or some other Vue library accidentally appears in our project's dependencies and automatically deduplicates them. So one good answer is to use Vite. That's always a good answer. Vite addresses the runtime portion of our bad state that we got the monorepo into, though. How do we get the monorepo out of the build time compilation bad state? For that, we do need to remove the duplicate copies of Vue since the types are included with those different versions. One way to do this is to run pmpm dedupe. The dedupe command will choose the higher version, 3.3.4 in this case, and upgrade everything depending on the older version over to that. From there, we'll see that pmpm compile is passing again with no errors. That's a bunch of workarounds to get us out of a bad state. Is there a way to prevent the bad state from happening in the first place and slowing down our productivity? This finally brings us to catalogs. Catalogs were introduced and inspired by a concept that exists in other programming language ecosystems like Rust and Java for managing repos of multiple projects. The Gradle build tool calls the concept catalogs, which we thought was the clearest name and inspired PMPM's feature. My favorite part of catalogs is that they're straightforward, and you already probably have a really good guess at what it does. You've probably written code like this before, which refactors a bunch of magic numbers into a nice reusable constant. In this case, the Vite team factored out a few common TCP ports. Catalogs are a new tool that allow you to do the same thing for package.json files, and I think they make a really big difference when you have hundreds of package.json files. Let's take a look at how a catalog is set up. All minor repos using pmpm have a pmpm workspace.yaml file. To set up a catalog, I can add a new catalog object config here. From there, the next time someone, you or your teammate, runs pmpm add for a package, pmpm will reuse that constant so new dependency declarations stay in sync with what the rest of the monitor is doing and don't accidentally bring in something new. This prevents that entire original problem we were seeing earlier from happening in the first place. I think that's a much better development experience. Of course, this doesn't mean you should never use the latest version of package or upgrade. I still recommend having some mechanism to automatically open pull requests, upgrading dependencies in your repo. The important difference is that that process can happen separate from when you're building out new functionality or refactoring so you aren't caught off guard by version mismatches. You may notice there's a colon at the end of the catalog part. Catalogs are implemented as a new protocol, and that's an intentional part of the design. There are many solutions out there today to synchronize and add constraints to package or JSON files, but they typically operate with a check and fix workflow, which can get out of sync. With a new protocol, the package manager natively understands your intentions and makes the catalog the one source of truth. The colon is specifically to distinguish it and denote it as a catalog, as opposed to like a git tag. If you're watching closely, you may be wondering what happens if a package using the PMPM catalog specifier protocol is published and consumed in a different repo that doesn't use it. Well, similar to the workspace protocol which exists today and multiple package managers support, the catalog colon portion is replaced with the constant on publish, so the package adjacent files in your monorepo stay portable. There's one other surprising benefit of using catalogs. During my day job, I observed many developers blocked from merging their PRs due to package.json or pmpm lock files conflicting. This can be frustrating when you are ready to merge your code, but have to make another unexpected, menial fix and wait for CI builds to run again. It's difficult to prevent merge conflicts entirely, but using a catalog reduces a few specific instances of them. During the development of catalogs, we researched a few common scenarios. Suppose commit A upgrades a dependency and just merged. Depending on what your commit does, you'll see a few different things conflict. What I want to call out is that catalogs aren't perfect, 
But it's interesting to see more catalog usage means less package.json conflicts on the far right column here. That's because a PR upgrading a catalog defined dependency only changes one line in the pmpm workspace.yaml file and doesn't touch package.json files at all. That's catalogs. To recap, most of the time you want one version of a dependency in a monorepo. Catalogs let you do that more easily. In fact, I'd recommend declaring everything in the catalog by default and making deviations the exception. Second, using the catalog speeds up your team and prevents unnecessary merge conflicts. The RFC for catalogs has been ratified and we're currently in the implementation phase. We're expecting the feature to land on PMPM in the next few months. When it's released, please give us your feedback and let us know how it works. I wanted to end with a special thank you to the primary maintainer Zoltan. Zoltan was a big help in the catalogs RFC discussion and is the atlas holding up PMPM day to day. I also wanted to say it's an honor to speak at vconf alongside so many other fascinating technologies. I've been working in open source since I was in middle school, and it's a dream to speak at an open source conference. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of vconf. <laughs>